Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everybody, Sean here. I want to welcome you to this week's episode of the Dental Up Podcast. My guest this week attended Indiana University and received his Doctorate of Dental Surgery. He joined the Indian Health Service and became a lieutenant in the United States Public Health Service. Currently practicing from Bastrop, Texas, please welcome Dr. Nathan Collins, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Collins? It is going great, Sean. Thank you so much for having me today. It's Tuesday. It's sunny and warm here in Texas. It's a great day. Ah, I love you, man. I love my Texas doctors. You guys are always up and freaking full of life and I'm proud of America. It's, and I just love Texas. It is a Texas. great place. It is a great place. I, I was not born here, but I got here as soon as I could financially do it. What a great story you have too, man. It's just, uh, it's just great. And I can't thank you enough for all the work. You're one of our top accounts and it's kind of neat to, to hear your story and, um, especially come from such a small town, but hey, dude, you know, I always like to start off a little bit about sports and, uh, mm-hmm. the great state of Texas, man. Are you in any, uh, playoffs of basketball? We got, is San Antonio even in it this year? I don't even know. I uh, you know, I, I don't watch basketball. I watch football, honestly, uh, more of a, more of a football kind of a guy, which I'm coming from Indiana. I was, you know, I'm, I'm a Colts fan. I, as I would grew up kind of in the Peyton Manning kind of an era. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of when I was going to dental school and everything when Peyton was, you know, kind of doing his thing. So these, days it's harder but i'm still a colts fan i still feel like you know i'm from there i should i should still be a fan even even if they're not doing too well that's so that's so cool and i i just uh indiana i'm learning more and more about it um you know as i i've got a a little venture that i'm doing out there with purdue university and uh Uh so it's kind of neat there and uh it's a little car thing we got my uh, i got a buddy that's in England with Bolton College and they're working with Purdue College and it's uh, working mm-hmm. with the engineer school. So I've learned quite a bit about Indiana lately and uh, I'll get more into that later once we uh, once we get my it's uh, Keating Supercars. It's a little adventure on the side. I love cars. <laughs> so this, these things are going to be awesome. But we're kind of working on a little uh, – there's a uh, place out there, SF Motors. It's like one of the biggest hmm. electrical engine makers. And I think it's more towards huh. South Bend, that little place. But um, okay. yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of where the engines are going to from the gas and fuel to uh, yeah. electric but uh yeah, we'll see that's it's just uh i'm gonna have my engine i got like a 650 horsepower coming it's uh, called a keating bolt it's pretty cool man but uh wow. enough enough of that we'll, we'll forget about that this is a dental show baby so <laughs> Cars, you know, come on. I mean, car, cars are pretty interesting too. And uh, South Bend, what is the what was the manufacturer? I'm trying to. There was who was the um, uh, the American Motor Company? Yeah, or who was it? and actually, these these there. guys, SF Motors, they're a big company from China, but uh, they're like mm-hmm. they're just super huge in electrical motors, and they bought the old uh, American Motors. Uh, they they okay. used to make the Hummers and everything, so they bought that uh-huh. whole building, and uh, so they're redoing it, and uh, it's it's a pretty oh, neat wow. thing. So uh, we're hopefully going to be out there like towards the Indianapolis 500, and uh, we're going to unveil the oh, car. Oh, that's a fun. And, that's a fun event. If you've never gone to that, you should definitely go. Never been, and you know, dude, if we do go, are you close to there or no? Or you're Texas, dude. <laughs> no, I'm in Texas. <laughs> what am I thinking? Shut up, Sean. Uh, I've got family in Indiana still, but I I go back once a year. But I I try to stay in Texas. Yeah, I, I really love Texas. Oh, dude, I, first time I ever went there was last year, and I went to Austin and. Um, I just, you went to the right place. Yeah, it was so neat. It was in August, man. It's kind of the heart of the heat, but I, I'm a big heat guy. I grew up, you know, on the beach and sunny weather, mm-hmm. and I love it. My face doesn't love it. I just got a bunch of stuff from my dermatologist, man. Every time he sees me, his eyes light up, and he looks at my PPO insurance because we're going to hook this guy up real good. <laughs> you got to wear Well, I used to live in New Mexico, and then I live here, and it's you've got to put on a lot of sunscreen. If you're if you're oh, light complected, it's it's rough. Yeah. It is rough in the Southwest. Yeah. I'm fair skinned, oh, blue eyes, and dude, I never use that sunscreen. All the years coaching football, and then all the years out in uh, fishing that I do, and I'm golfing, and I just got to mm-hmm. do it. I did this stuff uh, about a month ago that, you know, it's all these... 
um, keratosis type skin things. And then I, I get mm. these basal cell sarcinomas and these squamous cells. And uh, no melanomas yet, knock on wood here, but uh, that stuff is just crazy. And so they're just lasering it off, they're cutting it off, they're freezing it off. And I did this stuff, man, about a month ago. It's called Effidux. <laughs> it's like mm. the last resort for the dude with the, the messed up <laughs> face. So, dude, they said, man, you're going to be down for like a week or two. You're going to look like hell. Yeah. And I look at pictures oh. online. I Google that shit, and it's like, what the heck? So I put this cream on my – it's just a cream, and you put it on. Yeah. So I, I took like three or four days off work. I'd, I did a meeting on Tuesday, and I took Wednesday through probably a Monday off. And, and dude, it didn't even start to take till like Monday of the week I got back. And I looked like I had uh, – all the bad stuff pulls out of your face and on your forehead. And oh, everything. wow. And I had – I looked like I had freaking – you know, chicken pox or measles with herpes simplex 10 all combined. You know, it's like, what the hell? I couldn't. Everybody's like, what is going on with what Sean? What happened like, to Sean, dude? Like, yeah. that looks like he got to call him pizza face, man. It was like yeah, bad. <laughs> I look like an uh, adolescent going through the worst acne you ever seen. That. And uh, my biggest problem was, you know, we go out a couple nights at dinner, you know, a week, and I was just, I look forward to that. And I, I couldn't do that for like three weeks. I was eating yeah, at home. No, I, got, just, I got to know my home before any, I, the most I've known that home is like, stay at home. Honey, what are you getting for groceries? It's like crazy, but uh, good. We might have to cut that out there. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, a little, little too, too much. Yeah, yeah. TMI. <laughs> hey, but real quick, back to a little football. Uh, big news is uh, Des Bryant. They might be letting him go from Dallas. I hear, and uh, that's oh. he's kind of a little whiner on the sideline. I don't like. It. I mean, they always say he's, uh, you know, he's he's really got a passion about it. But he looks like me. He's kind of a little belly aker when he's not getting the ball mm -hmm. on the sideline. But it kind of be cool if the Rams could pick that dude up. We could. Uh, we could have used his skills, yeah. that's for sure. But um, yeah, we're mm. I'm, I'm excited about our Rams this year, and I know Dallas. You guys two years ago were just crushing it, and then this last yeah. year you guys kind of sucked a little bit. But um, it's like the yeah. same thing with the Raiders. You know, you, two years ago you both Raiders and Cowboys came from nowhere and just really dominated in a way that they thought, hey, great things are coming. But then last year they both kind of took a big. Uh, a uh, big, you know what? But hey, it's every season start. Everyone's uh, you know undefeated at the start of the season. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a start. And the the Cowboys, yeah, you never really know what they're going to do, right? I mean, it's it's just some years they don't look like they have much going on, and they they you know, and they kind of come out of nowhere. And other years, you think they've got all this talent, and uh, yeah, they're exciting every year. Most yeah. people here are pretty pretty much Dallas fans in this area. So right. yeah, it's it's. What yeah, to say anything bad about them is yeah, it's yeah. not not acceptable. Well, what about uh, Houston Texans? Are you kind of go for them? Are you guys close to Houston? Where's where is it? So we're yeah, we're Bass Drops about oh not quite halfway. We're about oh, about an hour and a half from Houston. Okay. Um, between Austin and Houston. So um, you know, Houston is just the Texans. I don't know. They're they're kind of like the the stepchild of Texas or something. Yeah. You know, it's like they're the Dallas gets all the Dallas gets all the attention. You know, yeah. um, that's you know they're America's team, right? Yeah, Everybody's exactly. got to everybody's got to kind of love them so uh you know we don't we don't hear much about the rams or, or the raiders much in texas you know it's kind of a <laughs> oh, sorry yeah. they don't like to talk about <laughs> those even, california guys are weird out there <laughs> yeah well austin austin's i think the only place people from california are allowed to live in texas i don't think they let them live anywhere else it's like you can go to austin but that's it okay, you, know? you know that's true because my best friend growing up in elementary school and in high mm -hmm. school at, at 18 he moved with his mom who lived in austin he's been there for the last 40 years or whatever and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of california dudes out there and, and awesome but what what a great little town and what a history i mean you know i just yeah. never retained all that history as you get older it all kind of you know the clarity and yeah. what texas went through i mean we were re we went through that capitol building and went like did a four-hour tour thing dude and what a history and all the pictures and all the they're quite important part of that uh the you know the shaping of the united states back in the day man and what the spanish and all that and just the mexicans it's just crazy but uh yeah it's just a lot of history there man it was kind of neat and i think I think it was 100 degrees out and 110 percent humidity and that place was ac and we're like we're staying here for a while 
<laughs> we are not going. Yeah, if you're going to visit, don't don't visit like like August or July. Or those those aren't the months to. Yeah, and especially you know if you're coming like my family from Indiana, they they die when they come here during that time of year. So it's just it's not the time to visit. You know, come to us in the winter. You know, yeah. especially if you're one of the northern states and you you know you just don't have nice weather. You know, Indiana never had quite nice winters. That's a great time to come to Texas. No it's kidding. 60 70 degrees and you can just walk around and it's 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 a beautiful time to come. But uh-huh. yeah, Texas Capitol building i believe it's actually taller than the u.s capitol i mean that just it just, says a lot about texas and the mentality is you know hey everything's everything's (laughs) bigger in texas man and it is i mean they had the you know the whole uh whole thing on the black soldiers they had a whole thing it's just yeah. stuff you don't really hear about unless you're in that area or you're a historian you know but uh no really amazing and uh hats off to it man it's just a uh, very proud state and just uh mm-hmm. it's just as neat man but um oh that's awesome dr collins well hey let's dental up you know and okay first the thing i want to ask you is why did you get into dentistry and at what point did you think i want to be a dentist do you, do you want the politically correct answer? I want you to get, say it like, the way it is, baby, because there ain't no holes barred. This is my show. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm not – okay. So I, I don't give the dental school interview answer. Right? Yeah. I, give, I give the uh, the real answer. Exactly. So uh, my, fr- my freshman year of college, I went to Purdue University. That's where I was in undergrad. Okay. And so I got that Purdue connection also. Originally, I wanted to be, you know, MD, medical doctor. That, that was my goal. Okay. And uh, between my freshman and sophomore year, I um, – uh, I, I, again, my, I'm always in small towns. My parents are always in small towns. They had, they had left uh, Fairland, that little town I grew up in of 150, moved to Batesville, which is a little bigger, but not much bigger. Um, it's Southern Indiana. Anyhow, there's a small little hospital there. And during the summer, I thought, hey, you know, since I, you know, I want to be a medical doctor, I'll find some kind of job in this hospital, you know, okay. uh, to get some experience and things like that. And, uh, you know, so I, I talked to them and they're like, oh, this is great. You know, this guy wants to be a medical doctor. Let's let's find some jobs for him. So they 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 just had me doing different stuff throughout the hospital, keeping me busy. But it, it was it worked out great. Okay. Uh, but those the medical doctors, it's just insane the amount of time they spend at a hospital. Um, you know, they're working holidays they're working late. They're doing all you know, they're walking home with this big stack of charts and things yeah. like this. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like, wow, you know, it's it's kind of crazy. But yeah. uh, just the things they deal with and things like that, too the emergencies and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't, I don't know if I really want to do, you know, life and uh, life and death and um, working at least some of these hours, you know, there's got to be another way, something I could do medical where I'm not telling people they're going to die and stuff like that. So um, I go back for my sophomore year in college and I'm, I'm kicking around dentistry as an idea. I'm kicking around maybe going into, you know, genetics or some kind of biology, something like that. And I'm talking to my guidance counselor and she said, well, have you ever thought about being a dentist? And I'm like, no, I never, never entered my mind. You know, as a kid, I never had cavities. You know, I had a good relationship with my dentist as a kid, but mm-hmm. I never really thought about becoming a dentist. Um, so uh, she's like, well, let's, you know, go, go see, um, you know, uh, why don't you go see my dentist? He's, he lives just, you know, just off the Purdue campus. And uh, his name was Dr. Michaels, nice guy in his 50s. And, uh, you know, he's talking to me and he said, hey, you know, uh, you know, I I work four days a week. I take five, six weeks of vacation a year and I make one hundred twenty thousand a year, which, you know, so this is 1997. So one hundred twenty thousand for a year. Pretty it's good like, for a dentist at that point. Yeah, it's like and I'm like, I'm sold. This uh, this is a, this seems like the career for me. And I, I love it. I, I love seeing patients. I love talking to people and uh, I don't have to give people bad news about, you know, cancers, typically yeah. things like that. And it, but it's, it's very, you know, it's hands-on, it's kind of arts and crafts, but you do get to kind of, you know, get to know patients and stuff. And, and typically it's a pretty good day. If someone's upset, I can usually, um, you know, kind of, we could take care of it. Most of our patients are pretty happy people every now and then we get someone a little unhappy, uh, but, but definitely glad um, that I went to uh, become a dentist instead of the medical route. And uh, yeah. So and basically, that's where I am. So I, I don't take five, six weeks vacation a year, and I, <laughs> I don't work four days a week. Um, I, I think things have changed a little bit then since, uh, since, you know, that part I haven't been able to achieve. But otherwise, yeah, happy, really enjoying it. Unbelievable. Well, you're crushing it, dude. And, you know, just uh, just seeing what you send in and uh, the quality and your, your young, you're a young gun. I mean, you, you basically, didn't you start uh, – in your first uh, dental practice, and the I think it was the Indian Health Service, wasn't that mm-hmm. like 2012 or so? Or 
God, uh, so I started Indian Health Services. It would have been 2005, actually. Oh, okay. um, this opened to this office opened 2012. That's that may what, be. Okay. So this, this, yep. Yeah, my office, One Smile Dental. That that's actually opened 2012. So I'm 40. I don't know if that's considered young or old as a that's dentist. That's young, it baby. Like You're a puppy. I, yeah, wish, okay. I wish I was 40. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Actually, I don't, because that's when I was starting my company after working for someone for 17 years. I started my company at 40, and uh, I just knew it's going to be a hard 10 years. And thank God yeah. I got through those first 10, and now it's kind of neat. But uh, okay, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's at some point, right? So when did when did you guys start Keating? When was that? It was 2002, and uh, okay. yeah, so it was like um, I started working in a, a dental lab in 1984, and uh, I was making like 90 bucks a week man and it was like oh i'm gonna be a dental tech and i worked there for 17 years and uh helped grow that company and then i started my own and it's just uh it's just a dream come true you know and i always said you know what i go when i when i'm 50 years old i'm gonna be set and i because i knew Mm -hmm. you know you put the time in it will come to you and uh my wife always gave me crap for that she goes don't rush life and (laughs) I kind of look back and I understand her now a little bit more. Like, I wish I wouldn't have rushed it. I just always said that and I knew it. And now, look at I'm going, I'm 55. I'm going, I don't want to be six. I don't want it to go another 10 years. But it's just, you know, you start, you know, you just see your body kind of go, you know, you got to take care of yourself as you get older, man. Yeah. Wait till you get 50, yeah. dude. You're just a young puppy. But uh, <laughs> things will change. Next 10 years, though, I mean, the way you're going, dude, and I mean, you're like top 15 account out of all of our accounts. It's just kind of I'm like, who the heck wow, is cool. this? I didn't know that. Who's this Nathan huh. Collins, man? It's like <laughs> yeah. you, you yeah. crushed it last year with us for sure, and you're still on pace with it. And so I want to get into that story and how um, sure. starting off. And so, but tell me about because we we have a dude, we have a we met some people from the Indian Health Service. It's called mm-hmm. Fort Defiance, and I think it's in Arizona. And we started with them years back, and we met them at an AGD trade show a guy named robert lloyd was in charge of it but i know you're talking to me about the indian health service tell me a little bit about that tell me about your staff i mean it's just a great story so first off let's let's backtrack so we we went through your purdue boilermaker and then Uh you went to indiana university right so tell Mm -hmm. me a little bit about your college journey and then how you started your first place of work in the the dental field so uh you know my father graduated from purdue um he's an electrical engineer so that's how you know, that was that was his choice. And great school, great school. No um, you know, there's a little bit of Indiana University, Purdue University rivalry, but yep. Indiana only had one dental school, so I didn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's 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 where I had to go to dental school. And don't, the faculty did not let me forget that, that I graduated <laughs> from Purdue and they gave us all kinds of. So, yeah, the, the doctors that graduated from Indiana, you know, the the, uh, the the main campus, you know, people from Purdue were just like, Oh, country bumpkins, and they would joke with you about slopping hogs and things like that all the time. You know, they just, they, you know, they're like kind of like, you know, you people from Purdue, make sure to kind of wipe the manure from your feet as you walk into the dental school, you know, because there's like eight of us, you know, most of the people went to Indiana University, but uh, you know, great dental school, you know, it, it was challenging. I, I don't think anybody would say their dental school times weren't tough, but you know, looking back, you know, it, it was, it was good, learned a lot. It was definitely a challenging time. But as I got to my, um, End of dental school, I'm kind of, okay, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, do I want to stay in Indiana? Do I want to go somewhere else, try another state? Um, you know, my family's in Indiana and, uh, you know, talking to some different people. Um, you know, a friend of mine was going into the Indian Health Services and he's like, hey, you know, why don't you, why don't you do this with me? You know, there's an opportunity in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and uh, it's a great location. It's not the middle of nowhere like Fort Defiance. And, uh, you know, and I thought, well, uh, you know, let's try this. And, you know, it's I, I they'll pay to move me out there. They'll pay to move me back. And if I decide I want to come back to Indiana, I can. Um, so, it, you know, and I talked to some other doctors and they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, try someplace new before you kind of get somewhere and get set, yeah. get somewhere and get established. And then you're kind of stuck. You know, you can't really move. Um, so uh, I was stationed in um, Santa Fe. New Mexico, um, which is about, you know, an hour from Albuquerque. So northern New Mexico, beautiful okay. place. If you ever get a chance to go there, definitely go there. Okay. Um, so uh, most of the time I was at the Indian Hospital there in Santa Fe. And then one day a week I went out to uh, Cochiti de Pueblo, which is kind of, you know, an hour outside of Santa Fe, just on their reservation. They had a little medical clinic and I was their dentist. No I mean, kidding. I just, uh, I, I was it. You know, I had one assistant. I had two ops. I had no hygienist. And, uh, you know, people came in and uh, they scheduled with her. And, uh, you know, I just, I was there one day a week, kind of a dentist kind of a thing. And uh, 
That's crazy. So my, what did you yeah. do? Did you do everything from extractions to we, any? We did everything. <laughs> yeah, we did everything, everything we could. So it was just, um, you know, whatever, whatever they needed, whatever we could kind of provide them, you know, dentures, extractions, root canals. We didn't do any implants then at that time. Okay. Um, but, you know, I saw all age groups. So I saw as little as I could comfortably, uh, you know, three-year-olds. And then I saw people all the way up to their 80s and 90s. Unbelievable. Um, all my assistants were, were, were Pueblo Indians. So they, you know, most, most Pueblos could speak English, but mm-hmm. some, some of the olders uh, can actually only speak Spanish or their native language. So they'd have to do some translation for me. Okay. So I learned to, uh, I learned a little bit of different, I think it's called Caris Pueblo, which is okay. the language they speak there. So I learned how to say like a 23 forcep. They usually call that a cow horn. And I got to learn to call that, a, I believe it's called a wakashi in, uh-huh, in Karis. Okay. So that's kind of one of their jokes that they teach you some of their language and things like that. So all my, yeah, all my assistants were Native American, um, okay. very, you know, very Native American because New Mexico, I mean, they they speak their language. They still are on their original land. They're still, uh, okay. they still do their religion, things like that. And uh, so it was, it was a great, I did that for three years, great three years, but it just wasn't something I could do long term to kind of, to move up, I guess you would say in the, um, in the Indian health services, you have to kind of become more of like a paper pusher. You have to actually get out of dentistry and okay. become more of a manager type person. So I like, well, not really what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, so I found a, uh, my, I, I got out of the Indian health service step to three years, kind of repaid some loans and it was a great experience, but just not something long-term, okay. um, went into, found a, a, a private associateship, um, in, in the, right there in Santa Fe, actually, okay. uh, was thinking about moving to Texas at the time I had, so I had a friend here in Texas, the same one that got me into Indian health services, moved to Texas and started an office. It was trying to get me to come and partner with them. And I'm just like, well, you know, the, the way you want to do things, not quite how I want to do things. I'm not quite ready to jump into private practice partnership. I want to kind of work for someone else for a little while, get okay. a little experience. So I was an associate, I think for about two, two and a half years uh, there in Santa Fe. It was just small corporate office, just owned by one guy who's, who's actually based in San Antonio. Good experience, lots of patients. It was kind of a mix of um, uh, PPO, cash, Medicaid, so kind of high volume uh, kind of a place. And it was it was a good experience, but I kept thinking, you know, like I'd really like to have my own office, maybe maybe make it a little less Walmart, a little more Target, you know, a yeah. little nicer, maybe yeah. get rid of the Medicaid and just a nicer, nicer work environment. What so, about the guy? Did he mentor you much? Did he have much to offer you? But probably yes or no, but maybe you got as much experience on the, on the Indian reservation than that. Or tell me a little bit about what he did for sure. you as moving your future sure. forward. Yeah. Or not. Indian reservation – I, well, so Indian Reservation, I definitely got a lot of like surgical experience, um, you know, emergency treatments because you you get, you know, you're dealing with, you know, a lot of emergencies. Yeah. Uh, so I got a lot of experience with that. When I got into uh, when I became an associate, uh, you know, the so the owner was an absentee owner, owner, but he did have other doctors there that were oh, okay. older than me. Okay. Um, so that was, uh, that was probably where I learned the most, uh, from them. You know, they, they had a bonus system set up where they did make some money off the office. So they, they did have some, uh, incentive, um, you know, to yeah, some incentive to kind of help me out yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. They made some money off of it too. So, uh, yeah, that when I, when I started there, there was, a uh, uh, Dr. Torito, I think he's still there actually. Um, he, he was in his sixties when I was there. I don't know how old that makes Doritos. it now. Doritos. You got a brother Dorito? <laughs> 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 okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> I have to ask him, but, but cool. so cool guy. He's he's from New York, uh, oh, okay. so he's got that New York accent. You know, he's just uh, and uh, poor you know poor guy. Him and I kind of butted heads a lot when we were there because yeah. we we're both kind of strong personalities. But to be honest, I learned a lot from him. And uh, yeah, owe, owe him quite a bit because he was just, you know, he just had the experience and I would ask him and he could just very much, you know, this is what you should present to the patient. This is how you should say it. You know, um, when I'm looking through my treatment plan, he's like, okay, this is kind of what you have to focus on. Um, so I got a lot of good experience on, on how to be productive, you know, how, yeah. how to like go through the day, see people in a, an efficient manner, you know, have a productive schedule not kill myself, but take care of patients also kind of a thing. Um, so I, I kind of learned that. And when I got to where I could kind of produce, I don't know, I guess you'd say around 80,000 or something like that. I felt like, okay, I probably can, I feel comfortable enough to kind of go start my own office at no this kidding. point. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I moved in Austin in 2011 and I worked at a couple different offices kind of part time just to kind of get a location, uh, you know, do all the paperwork, get the office going. And then uh, May 2012, we just we just scratch scratch started uh, this office. Um, no. Just 
how did you find Bastrop and how did you go from Santa Fe to that part of Texas? Tell me how you got that in your mind, sure, that area. Sure. Well, I, I really loved Austin. Um, again, I've, I've got a, um, a dentist friend who uh, is in Kyle, Texas, and uh, he, he kept saying, you know, come visit me. Um, it's the same guy that opened the office and, you know, come, just come try out Austin. So I came here and just, you know, sixth street and the downtown part of Austin is just so fun and happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's just so much to do here. So I thought, okay, this is great. I, I love being near something cool like this. I don't necessarily want to live in it, but, yeah. but it's nice to be cool to kind of go there for the weekend. Um, New Mexico, there wasn't much going on on the weekends. Uh, yeah. Santa Fe, Santa Fe is a, it's a cool place, but there's not a lot of nightlife or anything like that. So, uh, um, moved to, you know, decided to move to, you know, near Austin. Okay. And honestly, I just, I, I would look at demographics, you know, I'd look at maps, I'd look at ratios, I'd look at demographics online, but, um, I started just, I would come here, uh, while I was associating in Austin, uh, or New Mexico, I'd come here on a vacation for a few days and I just, I'd start driving around. I just kind of on a map. Okay. Let me look outside of Austin and just kind of drive around and, and just kind of start looking for towns that I like. Cause what I would find is you maybe something would look good number wise, ratio yeah. wise and things like that. And then you'd actually go visit a town and you're like, yeah, this yeah. is not, you know, I'm not feeling it. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's really the uh, potential here that you would think. And, um, uh, um, so I, I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody to, to just pick a location without after actually living in the area and kind of trying it out a little bit firsthand because yeah. yep. it took me a little while. But I just on one of those trips, I uh, I uh, drove through, uh, I, I ran into Bastrop and just really love it. It's a, it's got a nice little downtown area. It's It's got a small town feel, which is more my, my, what I'm kind of used to. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's got, you know, Colorado river running through it. Oh. And uh, so you just kind of got the nature element and stuff and people are uh, there. It's a much slower pace than like Austin. It's kind of more laid back. The patients I, I feel are pretty easy to deal with and talk okay. to. I, I kind of relate to them a little bit. How um, big of a easier. population is it in Bastrop? Oh, Bastrop itself. Bastrop. I'm, I'm going to have to guess. I think, you know, the County, I want to say is around 80,000 or oh, something. Okay. I'm not sure what the population is now, but it's, it's definitely a smaller town. Um, it's, it's not, you know, um, it's not growing as fast from Austin, this direction as some of the other directions. So, but, but personally, I, I like that. Yeah, I just, I relate absolutely. better to small town patients. So if, if you're like a more of a city type person it's maybe this wouldn't work for you. You okay. know, I really think it's important to have patients you connect with, I yeah. guess is the way to put it. No, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, people that just, they, they feel comfortable with you and you feel comfortable with them. And when you explain stuff to them, they're just kind of like, Hey doc, you know, I like the way you tell me things and explain things. And, um, it's, uh, I was, uh, working on the North side of Austin when I was associating and getting this office going and it was just totally different feel. I mean, those were way more like kind of it, uh, kind of, a kind of a background kind of a people and just didn't relate as well. Okay. Uh, kind of a thing I, I do a little better with the country folk, I guess you would say. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, to me, that was kind of something I was looking long-term. I wanted to kind of find a location and be like, I, I feel comfortable being here, you know, 20, 30 years or something like that. That's so awesome. Uh, um, I mean, from going, I mean, you really start originally started in Fairland, a small town, of about 300 people. Then <laughs> you moved on and, you know, just kind of checking out your different areas, but to end up in Bastrop, up, man, that's that's awesome. So you open up One Smile Dental in 2012. Uh, now that had to be a huge milestone in your life. Tell me a little yes, bit about that. Yes. I mean, was it a build out? Was it a just a takeover of practice? Tell me a little bit about what you did to start it, and uh, tell me a little bit about the layout if you could. Uh, part of this search was I did go to breakaway practice seminars. I did oh, go okay. down to San Antonio and see Scott Luna, and uh, I've, I've talked to Scott, Scott's cool guy. Talked Isn't to him a he a times. stud? Scott is a yeah. He's Scott's a really awesome. motivated dude. I, I, I like that guy. Not, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll give him props. Uh, yeah, yeah, Scott. Scott's a really cool guy. He, and, um, he'll make you buy it. I mean, you could. T he's like the Pied Piper man. You listen to that guy at the end of it, it's like, what do I do? Where do I go? What do I buy? What do I? No, <laughs> that's what you kind of need. Though you need someone to kind of motivate you and give you the tools. Yeah. And he really yeah. did. He's touched some big practices. And you know what, dude? I can see why you're just kind of booming. I mean, because you do. You kind of got a breakaway practice. I mean, it really is mm -hmm. a kind of a neat little setup. So, uh, all right, keep going. So yeah. you took his little seminar thing and keep going. Yeah, took a seminar and, and got a lot of ideas on how to do the build out and everything. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm looking for locations. Um, 
you know, we, we at the, you know, opened the, you know, had a broker come up from uh, Houston to kind of uh, negotiate. So I, again, I, I had brokers in Austin trying to find locations for me and, and they just, yeah. you know, either couldn't find stuff or they couldn't seem to get something going negotiating wise. And uh, so finally I just started driving around Bastrop and uh, you know, we, I found a, you know, kind of somewhat new construction that was kind of, uh, you know, Bastrop's kind of all laid out along a highway okay. where all the retail is. And uh, it was right next to uh, to the Walmart, which, you know, again, traffic. I don't know. You get a lot of traffic. Yeah, <laughs> I, everybody gives me, I know my consultant who's from Dallas always gives me a hard time. and doesn't like me to mention Walmart because she feels like it's a little more lower yeah. class, I guess you would say. But it's like it's there. We don't have a target. It's Bastrop. We don't have anything else. You yeah. know, it's, it's Walmart uh, kind of a thing. So it's I wanted something kind of anchoring, you know, uh, near like a bigger store, a grocery store or something like that to, to get the traffic, to get the signage. And uh just called about it and it happened to be, you know, luckily most of it wasn't filled up yet. I was able to get kind of the end cap that was near the traffic. And, uh, the, you know, I, I got a broker out of Houston to kind of negotiate the lease for me, but it was, it was just a shell. There was nothing, um, there was nothing built up. There was, I had to, you know, there was no dental office here. There was nothing here. It was just new construction. So we had to kind of, uh, to, to put all that in, I guess you would say. Oh, that um, still probably wasn't bad. I mean, for a build, I mean, sometimes you're paying 500 grand for a practice that's already existing mm-hmm. or even more. Yeah. It just depends. And some guys can get it cheaper or something real old. But to have the foundation from the start up, I mean, in a way, probably a little more expensive than trying to rehab something. But tell me about that, where you got a design and everything else. And tell me about the journey on building that dang thing. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, yeah, we, I used, um, I, at the time I used, uh, um, um, I, I really love ADEC chairs. So I used, uh, I used Benco for all the equipment and okay. Benco actually did a design. Um, I used, uh, I, I did go on dental town and I had some people kind of look at my design. Um, again, the beautiful thing about building your own office is it gets to be the way you want it. Exactly. Um, you, you don't have to necessarily, um, compromise, I guess is the word. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you want big ops, Hey, you get big ops, you know, if, if, if you, uh, you know, if you want, you know, wider hallway or, you know, kind of whatever you want, I mean, it's, you can kind of design it that way. Um, so some of the things with my, my, uh, I have a 3000 square foot space. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's big. (laughs) And I, I, a lot of the people cringe at this. I only have six ops. Um, some people are like, wow, that's crazy. You could get eight ops, but they're, they're big, they're comfy. The, you know, the, the, the kids, the parent can sit in there with them and everything when we're doing work and we're not bumping into each other. So, um, you know, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have, you know, I would have maybe built more ops into the space or bigger space. I really didn't think I was going to be using using all my six ops, honestly, within five years. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, just starting out, you know, I, I, I thought, Hey, you know, maybe 10, 15 years from now, I'll need all these six ops happened a little sooner. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, lots of space, lots of, you know, wide hallways and, you know, plenty of bathrooms and just, you know, it's comfortable, uh, big break room. And, um, you know, so it wasn't the cheapest build out in the world. Um, hey. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, but it, but I really like it, and I'm very comfortable. And it, you know, if if I'm here for ten hours out of the day, I'm comfortable. You know, yeah, it's like it's like want. home away from home. So yeah. it's it's nice. It's yeah. nice. That's so cool. What about with uh, you have an associate helping you, or is you just one man show? No, I've got an associate. He actually, uh, it, it hasn't been that long. He actually started just, uh, I want to say end of January. Oh, um, okay. Dr. Dr. Ashwin Galati. He's a, he's an Austin guy and, uh, he, I think he went to school in Arizona. So, um, okay. he's again, I'm not a morning person. Um, but my consultant kept telling me, Hey, you need to start looking at you to the point you need a you need a associate. Yep. Um, you know, make sure they know that there's buy-in potential in the future and this is how we're going to do the buy-in and everything. And, you know, so, um, she, uh, you know, kind of was walking me through that and everything, but she's like, you just, you need to start, uh, you're in Bastrop and you don't really have a lot of, you know, corporate competition yet, yeah. but down the road you might. Yeah. So you need to kind of start staking your turf a little bit, uh, you know, looking at expanding your hours. Uh, so we, so we brought him on to, to basically do earlier hours. Again, I'm not a morning person. Um, yeah. so he starts early, he starts 7.00 AM, but he's done by 3.00 PM. Yeah. So then he's got the rest of his day to kind of you know Absolutely. roll and, and do what he wants to do and go back to Austin and go for a run or whatever he wants to do kind of a thing. And, um, how's he got pretty good hands. He doing good for you so far. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Cool. Cool. You know, very cool guy. Um, very kind of laid back. So it's, it's a, <laughs> it's a good thing if you get an associate to check personalities, yeah. I guess is uh, that's oh, something that yeah. was, uh, my consultant was really telling me about because he's, he's, he's got a little different personality than me and that's probably why we can get along a little better. Exactly. Um, 
two two of me in the office would not be a good idea. <laughs> That's what my wife says about me. She hates it when she gets around people that are like just totally kind of out there and aggressive, whatever. And she goes, I already got Sean at home. I don't need another person in my ear, you know, like while we're out and someone <laughs> gets in her face trying to talk too much and it's like, all right, hey, easy boy. I got yeah. I got I got one of you at home. I don't need to hear yeah. this. <laughs> I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> no, that, that's a good thing. But uh, no, so that's that's freaking so true, dude, that you know what? I got guys, well, I'm only two, three days a week, and you're just losing so much business. And I got some guys that stay open late because, you know what? Hey, people work for a living. You know, they don't yeah. get off till five yeah. or six. And, hey, you want a 7 o'clock, uh, you know, appointment? I'll do it, you know. And mm -hmm. it's the guys, yeah. you know, just really putting in the work effort, especially, too, you and youngster. I mean, put in your dues and times right now. Now work your butt yeah. off till you're like you're 50 and then you can write your own ticket. I mean, but so many guys, I mean, you if you always do what you've always done, you always have what you've always had. And it's just like the same people keep doing the same thing and they're always just going to have that, what they have. And yeah. you just need to really kind of push that. And I just think it's great, uh, to great what you're doing because for such a young and starting off like that, 2012, I mean, it was five, five years ago or so. And mm -hmm. you guys are yeah. crushing it, man. I'm from a place called Bastrop. How, tell me a little bit about <laughs> Bastrop. How, what's, is there a man named Bastrop? What's the history behind Bastrop? So, uh, evidently, it was named after uh oh it, it, there's a it, if anybody that you come to the visitor center, center here and they'll show you a whole video but it, it was named after a guy called baron de bastrop and uh he was evidently one of the uh, a friend of um uh stephen f austin and uh, he was kind of one of the early uh settlers um no you know, that came from, one from of the Tennessee frontiersmen maybe huh? yeah yeah <laughs> just, he's named after him and evidently he was kind of a kind of a cool guy very entertaining guy but he's also a little shady too you know a little yeah. bit of a, a, a slick oil salesman or something like that and uh but evidently every he was very likable so yep. people just didn't care uh, <laughs> well, that, but, that. uh yeah we're named after him and it's just uh you know it's like i said it's just it's just a cool town it's just um you know, we've got just a nice historic district, just historic houses and historic businesses and just local, just a lot of local restaurants. And uh, uh, we've got an arts art scene here. We've got the Lost Pines Art Center. Uh, we've got some artists moving out from Austin. Austin, you know, is the housing prices are going up quite a bit. Oh, so we it's are through the roof. Kind of moving out the way. Yeah. And it's, so it's just kind of a, you got a mix of Austin here. You've got a mix of like people that two, three generations that have, have been out here and, uh, you know, just kind of a nice, nice mix, just some, some modern modern, some historic, um, you know, good restaurants. Um, we're not too far from Smithville. Smithville's another place. It's kind of, kind of blowing up a little bit. They've, they've got some kind of cooler restaurants moving out there from Austin and people are kind of buying stuff up and fixing up the old houses and everything. So okay. it, it, it's just kind of a nice, it's, it's a real nice area, you know, it, 10, 15 years from now, it might kind of blow up a little bit too much, but, yeah. but for now it's, it's really cool. Just a really nice place to kind of visit worth a trip outside of Austin if you ever get a chance if you're in oh, Austin. Oh, definitely. Should... I'll be out there again. Uh, I go out, I'm going to go out again. I sponsor this little uh, Maverick Summit. You probably, if you get on Dental Town, that Twan, uh, yeah. Twan Flicker Swan. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. a cool, he's Dr. a little, Fam. yeah, Dr. Fan, man. He's a, he's a go-getter. I like his, uh, I like his energy. He's another cool guy. I feel like I should really befriend him because his, uh, one of his full-time hygienists, actually, she part-times for me every now and then. Oh, yeah. Um, so I feel like I know him. Uh, uh, but it's like, and so we'll talk about his office a little bit and stuff. And then I'm always, you know, we, we, he's posted on some of my posts on dental town and, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> cool guy. Um, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got a lot of energy too. He's real, another one kind of like Scott Luna where he's just kind of a go-getter. Yeah. Real down to earth and just the nicest guy. And, you know, I got to meet him and hang out and drink beers with him. And, you know, he, he I like him. He, uh, I listened to him one time about, you know, he's into cars too. And uh, he was talking yes, about <laughs> this wagon, Mercedes wagon that's faster than heck. And I'm like, I remember I had like a Q7 for like a little company, you know, to have a little wagon type SUV or whatever. That's just an excuse mm -hmm. to get a, another car. I said, oh, we need a company yeah. car. So I had this Q7. I hated it, man. It was like they had this sunroof and the sun came in and hotter and always. And like, and he was telling me about, well, they got these, you know, E63 AMG wagon and it's like faster mm -hmm. than almost any car. The road. And I went down the little Fletcher Jones motor cars right down the street and, you know, Newport. And, um, 
I freaking picked one up, and I have been driving that thing. It's one of my favorite cars, and I got a new wow. 2018, been ordered for like six months. It's going to be the only one with all red interior, carbon fiber, every single oh, piece. Wow. And it's like, it's even faster. It's like 603 horsepower and like 600 <laughs> pounds of torque, and it's like 3.3, zero to six. I mean, and it's a station nice. wagon, and it's like a total nice. sleeper. But uh, no, but um, yeah, Twan's a good little dude, and that's the only reason I would get out to Austin. In the god forsaken heat of August, but uh, but dude, what a like you're saying, like I want to try your town because just the little foodie place. I mean, they got Franklin mm-hmm. Barbecue and all the you know the yeah. trendy places, but they had a lot of little small you know places outside of town, and that's what you want. You don't want to, I don't like all these big corporate, you know, just yeah. red. I like these kind of family places, and you see that out there. I mean, even to the the whole music scene out there, the Austin city limits and all that. But it surrounds the in the whole Texas area. I'm sure it's just up and coming little towns, and so that's a you're in a you're in a gold mine. It's just a beautiful place, probably to raise. Now, do you have children? Uh, married? No kids. No kids. Yeah. I actually just got married last June, so we're we're working on the kids. Congratulations! Yeah, that's that's kind of what man. we're doing right now. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, my wife's from Austin, so her family's in Austin, so I can't move. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm definitely not going anywhere. Uh, so my family, family finally had to accept that I'm not, I'm not going back to Indiana. So they're like, you know, that was, I think that was like the third date. That's when she like, okay, are you staying in Austin or are you thinking of moving? Cause if you're going to move in the future, it's not going to work. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to get together. You don't want to mess around with those Texas fathers or their daughters, man. Don't, they don't mess no, around no, no. out there. <laughs> they all have guns. That's, that's they something. Do. Yeah. That's, so that's why crazy. everybody's so polite here because everybody has a concealed carry gun. So oh. there's, yeah, don't, uh, <laughs> you know what, <laughs> that's what we stuff. need <laughs> out here. Cause I tell you, everyone else, they're all, they, you just, you get people carrying guns and, uh, everything's safe. It seems like, but, uh, no, it's, uh, California is so backwards on a lot of things, but, um, God, uh, Texas, man, I, you just, you're yes, sir. No, sir. You don't know who you, you don't want yeah. to mess around. <laughs> you know, you're driving down the freaking road and they got a big shotgun in their in the mirrors like in the, yeah. in the yeah. back window hanging. It's like, what the <laughs> heck? I mean, I go to uh Nevada's by us, like Havasu. We go there and it's like six mm-hmm. hours to drive and it's freaking all it's a wild west out there too, man. I, I've never really shot guns in my life. And a couple of years ago, Mm-hmm. I went out there with some friends and got a place on the river and it's just freaking on the lake there. Have a soon it's just bitching. And we went up into the hills, just like we just drove our truck, my buddy's truck and with his buddies. And we just went outside of town like 10 minutes and just went up in the little mountain areas. And yeah. they got the side of a mountain that you just shoot against. And then they put all these little projectiles, like bottles that you, you buy them from the gun places and they blow up when you shoot them. But, uh, I shot every kind of gun and it's hard. It's like, you got to push those bullets into the darn gun and that'll make yeah. your fingers like, like you, I'm such a sissy boy. It's like, after like 10 minutes, it's like, <laughs> can you do it for me? And it's like, what's that about your freaking gun loader? You freaking load yourself if you want. It's like, but after like 20 minutes, I go, this is hard work. And then, and then you're shooting. It's like a dollar a bullet of the, I mean, I shot AK 47s, AR six, I mean, everything. And, uh, Oh yeah. Uzis and stuff and Mac 10. I'm going, what do you guys got here, man? You can start a war. <laughs> so, uh, that shit, that stuff scares me, man. I mean, shooting out against yeah, the mountain, you can feel, on. you can yeah. feel it rip the mountain. It's like, that is so scary stuff. I mean, I did a BB gun when I was younger and I was scared with that, you know, freaking bouncing off the tree, coming back. I sit in my bar area outside by my pool and I'd shoot this big oak tree or whatever. And it was actually a ficus. And I shot that thing so much and that thing kept, it would bounce back and it missed my face. It was like yeah. 30 feet away, but it would come back so fast because all those CO2 cartridges I had, I had that plinker out there and it would bounce. And I'd, I'd have to put my sunglasses on to do it because it would hit my face all the time. And I, my wife's going, you're so stupid. And then she found out those, those little BBs went into our pool and it rusted oh. the bottom of the tiles after she found our pool guy told her what happened. Daddy don't have that gun no more after that. (laughs) It's like, nah, my shooting career's over, dude. It's like, okay. I didn't shoot my eye out, but it cost me 10 grand to redo the pool. For the pool. (laughs) Stupid little freaking BB gun. But no, that's good times, dude, out there for sure doing that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. 
Well, tell me a little bit about your day and your practice now. Tell me what it okay. consists of starting mm -hmm. off and uh, how many patients you see. And, you know, uh, we'll get into a little like practice management. I know you talked a little sure. bit about that and uh, some CE stuff, but uh, talk a little bit about your day and the life of, you know, uh, your dental practice. Well, first off, I have an amazing team that makes my life so much easier. So yeah, <laughs> definitely it. have a good team. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, just, just you like like before, you know, you guys, uh, we, we, when we were setting this up, you know, you were talking to Patty, my assistant. Yep. She had everything set up yesterday. She was on the phone with you all and yeah. she's got it blocked out on the schedule. And she's like, hey, doc, this is OK. Yep. You know, uh, you're doing this today. And, uh, you know, this is a set up and, you know, I blocked it on the schedule and and done, you know, Beautiful. so, you know, hire smart people. Exactly. Um, <laughs> no, it's true, man. You're yeah. only as good as your people, whatever business. Yeah. And I've said that over and over on this podcast and you do got a sharp crew, Patty and everyone else. I mean, they're on yeah. top of it and they're very friendly, but they're very mm -hmm. like, I remember we we're talking about getting you on this and it's like, well, let's just figure this out. And we're going through, I don't know what she was going through, but it's kind of a neat thing to have such a yeah, I love it when my doctor's got great crews because you know what? They're going to be successful and so many guys try to scrimp, you know, scrimp and save and you mm -hmm. pay your people well. You take care of them. They'll be with you for your whole career more so than not. Yeah. And it's like a playoff team. You know, everyone's got their spots. Everyone's got their positions and their divisions and you do it. You do it well. You take care of those customers, the patients and, uh, you know, you work with your lab and you become successful together and it's, it's not so much a job. It's kind of easy just doing what you do and you do you got a great staff and for such a young crew one of the youngest crews i got oh um, yeah they're they're all like under 25 <laughs> yeah it's crazy but uh, i think even one of my hygienists is under 25 yeah it's it's uh um myself and one hygienist we're the we're the only ones 40 and up and they're they're almost all like in their 20s yes no kidding yeah. i yeah, bet just it so tell me a little bit about those senior patients. So you got it all scheduled. Are you booked out? How far are you booked out? You think a week, two weeks, a month? Or no, how's that work? I, I try. Yeah, I really actually don't want to book. I know this is this is something I just had to learn um, again when I was an associate. You know, um, you know, you come in as an associate and you're thinking, oh man, you know, I want my schedule full for like two weeks, right? Um, you know, and if that's not happening, what's going on? You know, what what's the front desk or somebody's messing up? You know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to, if I can do same day treatment, um, you know, I, I want, you know, and we block out for, um, we call them major cases. So, you know, crowns, root canals, implants, things like that, a little more productive type procedures. Um, so I, I actually don't want to block out, um, okay. you know, be booked out that far. Um, you know, my, my hygiene, I want to pay new patient in, I bring all my new patients in through hygiene. Okay. Um, and then they stay with the same hygienist. I've got two and a half hygienists right now. We're okay. kind of bringing on our, our third. Um, they're all paid on commission. Okay. Um, they're all motivated to, to see patients and they're awesome. Nice. Um, they, they do the treatment planning pretty much. They know how I'm going to treatment plan. They do already talk into the patient. Um, uh, by the time I come in, I, it maybe takes me seven, eight minutes to do an exam. Most of the time, no you know, kidding. kind of just kind of, uh, you know, going over what already again, working, I work with the same hygienist. Um, you know, my, my associate has his hygienist and then I have mine. Um, so they, they know how I'm going to treatment plan. They've already talked to the patients. They can discuss implants. They can discuss crown and bridge. They can show them options, show them pictures, everything. So usually by the time I'm in there, I've already looked at, you know, in my office, I've looked at the x-rays and everything. I kind of know what's going on. Um, I, I, I go in, they introduce me, you know, we talk, I go over pictures with them a little bit, but, and then the hygienist takes it from there. You know, I'm trying to get into their op, you know, six, seven minutes, eight minutes, and then out of their way. Uh, so they can, you know, they can kind of go there, but if the patient wants same day treatment, I'm going to try, I want to ideally try to accommodate them if I can. Do you have um, a CERIC? If, Do you have a CERIC? I don't. Now okay. that was actually something that I'm, I'm trying to get on board. So my, my office is very, we're very team centric. Okay. Um, so I, uh, um, with my consultant and with my team, um, you know, we, we've got four assistants, we've got uh, two and a half hygienists. I've got three front desks, including an office manager, myself and, and, uh, and Dr. Galati. So we're, I guess we're mid-size. I don't, I don't know if that makes us That's a big office or not. Kind of big, dude. But, uh, you're, big? Okay. You're doing, all right. you got a big lab bill each month. So all you lab guys don't even try to send nothing to Nathan. He's with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. And you're just starting, dude. I can see you getting bigger. Just, you know, if you can emulate what you're doing and just, you know, uh, just working smarter, not harder. You know, that's how you can be miserable making a million dollars a year in your dental practice or million or making three million a year. You might as well mm-hmm. be miserable making three million, right? I mean, it's the same misery. Yeah, yeah, I always kind of say that. You know, I can be miserable doing this much or miserable <laughs> doing this much. I might as well be up here doing this because, no, not that we're miserable, yeah. but it's just – it's not any harder, dude. It's just getting a couple people no. in their positions and uh, just replicating what you do on a, just a little bit of a bigger scale. And it just uh, it comes back to you. I got some of my guys that just had started, you know, do the single practice. But then they went and got two or three practices in different little surrounding towns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I got these guys from Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Laurel, and they got several practices, man. And, uh, yeah, Douglas Tillery. I mean, that guy's a monster. It's just it's neat how you do that. But some guys don't want to push it that much but um i think what you got going is really kind of neat and uh what about tell me a little bit about do you what don't you do in your office i mean i hear you doing endo you're kind of working maybe on some pedo kids in a way or do you do any implants are you sinking implants yet or anything like that or yeah, t- tell me know. the do's and so, don'ts yeah sinking sinking implants as far as placing them yeah we we started that um, within the office this year, I was taking CE courses before that. Okay. Um, there's there's implant know how in Austin, which is a live uh, placement class, and okay. then uh, I went to a Sh- I went to a Shatkins class in Vegas. So I've been kind of um, so every year in January, you know, we sit down with the team and the consultant, and we come up with okay, what ten goals are we trying to achieve this year? Okay. Um, and it, if if the, whatever comes up, if if there's the, the team kind of decides, hey doc, we need to start doing this, then then that's what happens, you know. Okay. Um, if there's a procedure they want to add, um, so um, previous years it was like ortho, Invisalign, some of the other things getting added to the mix. Um, last year they wanted to do implants, um, but but we had some some other things we were trying to do also, and it didn't quite make the list. But this year implants definitely made the list. So um, so it's like okay, let's take CE courses, let's get it going. Um, um, so haven't placed a lot of them yet, but, but, you know, big demand for them here, Absolutely. um, especially if you can get the price point down a little bit for patients. I, I think it's just price. I think that's really the thing that keeps in, um, uh, patients, um, from getting implants. Um, uh, but we do, I, you know, I don't do, uh, impacted third molars. Now the associate Dr. Galati does, okay. um, so but we kind of brought it. That was kind of something it's like, okay, let me, I was referring those out. I can kind of get those, but I, I really try not to refer again. We're we're a small town. We're, yeah. we're kind of far from Austin and, it, you know, Austin is crazy traffic. It's, 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 you know, yeah. and you know, patients just do not want, we don't have any special. Well, so we have an oral surgeon and an orthodontist here in Bastrop, but they're here like one day a week. It's a uh-huh. satellite office for them. Oh, okay. So it's like, they just, they don't want to be referred. Um, and that was something that I kind of learned when I was an associate too, you know, that, that doctor was so successful because he would just bring the specialist into his office. Like yeah. if he needed a specialist, he'd have him come in the office. And it was just like, you don't have to go anywhere else. Uh-huh. We, will take care of it. We will get you here. So we, we really try to do that. I I'm good with kids, but I, but I'll do like, like fillings. I'm not going to do stainless steel crowns. I don't do ortho on like the younger group, you know, like below 10 or anything like that. But, um, I do, I do a lot of ortho on, you know, like the 10 to 12 year olds. Um, I like ortho better on adults actually limited ortho is probably one of my favorite things to do. No um, are you yeah, using just, just, Invisalign or six months or power prox? What system <clears throat> are you using? So I do, uh, I do limited ortho. Um, I'll do, uh, I, I took a six month course and, um, then I was kind of like, well, I, I just don't feel like I know enough. Okay. Um, I took it, a, I took it a long time ago. I want to say it was back when I can't think of his name now, when the original owner, yeah, Ryan, owned, uh, Ryan months. Swain, Ryan. The yeah, famous yeah, Ryan Swain. Love Ryan. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I, I took it back when he was giving the lecture and uh, I was like, well, you know, I just don't, uh, I don't feel like um, I know enough. So um, I did a little research online and uh, in North Austin, Cedar Park, um, there's a, there's a, um, a, a comprehensive live patient course. You could take it through the Academy of GP orthodontics. So it's, it's just a, a group for orthodontics for general dentists. Okay. And um, um, there's, a uh, um, Dr. Gearhart, um, Jeffrey Gearhart, um, you know, he's a general dentist, but he does ortho pretty much three days out of the week. He only wants to do ortho. So he does general dentistry one day a week and then ortho, uh, the other three days, um, just does a four day schedule. And he teaches a, 
a comprehensive course. So it's over a two year period. Okay. You follow patients and um, <clears throat> you, you know, it's one day lecture. I think it's a Friday lecture. Then Saturday you go to his office and you see patients. And uh, I felt like, you know, I, I, if I'm going to do ortho, I really want to know how to do it. Like, I don't want to just, just know a little bit and then yeah. kind of get in a situation where, why isn't this working? Um, so I, I did that. And then we, uh, you know, we, we brought comp ortho into the office. I want to say probably 20, I think I started that course 2013 or 14. Okay. I finished it 20, 2015. Um, so we started doing that. And then from there, once you understand comprehensive ortho, limited ortho is actually pretty easy. Um, so I actually don't even use a company for my, for my brackets and wire limited ortho. I just, I use the same system and I just, I just do limited ortho. I place so it. My system cool. to you're like MacGyver, dude. I mean, you're doing it all. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> No, that's cool. And especially, I just love that. I mean, I got a dude, I remember the doctor I had out in uh, Alaska. He did the same thing. I mean, there's not many places to go. Scott Brookshire and the dude just kind of tries to do everything he can. And you think all that money is going out the door if you can. And everyone does love the convenience of going just a one stop mm -hmm. shop. And, and uh, again, how far is, because uh, I know you said there's traffic and stuff to get into Austin. How far is it away? Hour plus or? <laughs> So Austin to get to like a specialist is probably an hour. So okay. we're on the, uh, we're on the East side of Austin, which is a side that just, it hasn't developed. There's really no development. So, you know, when you drive from here to Austin, I mean, you're kind of driving through fields. I mean, oh, there's okay. just not, we're not on the side that's really as grown as much. <clears throat> well, that's good um, because that's just going to, my brother did the same thing. My older brother, Kevin is an Adonis and 30 plus years ago, he was getting out of dental school and he was looking for a place to practice endo because he, he went into endo mm -hmm. and limited and he found Greensboro, North Carolina. And it was, it's grown so much since, but uh, it was a smaller town back in the early nineties, you know, late eighties. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it was just a different world. And, Things, you know, it kind of works out. I mean, try to buy as much real estate and everything you can right now if you can, dude. I mean, little plots of the uh, area. That's all I needed. <laughs> that's, I'm telling you, that's the best thing you could do, especially, too, you might want to build that little 3,000-square-foot place. I remember my first lab was 2,000 square feet, and then when I mm -hmm. when I upped up a few years later, I, you know, I'm at 31,000 square feet now, and it's like crazy. Wow, but uh, wow. think big, baby. Dream big. Good yeah, things happen. Yeah. But uh, not that you need it. But it's just you might pull in an oral surgeon and, you know, an endodontist that, you know, what, you work for me. You work for Dr. Collins, baby. And I'm getting, you know, it's a 60-40 rule, you know. Uh, I get 60 yeah. percent. You get 40, you know. And you don't have nothing to worry about. I do all the billing. I do all everything. You come in. You work for me. And boom. But what about uh, – <laughs> what about with you – getting your, you know, small town, you, um, but marketing wise, do you do social media? Do you do mailers? Do you work with the community? Tell me a little bit about your marketing efforts to drive we, patients to you. I guess we would do, <clears throat> gosh, we do like a little bit of everything. Um, okay. Marketing is something we're still trying to work the formula, I yeah. guess you would say. Um, I mean, uh, just uh, again, from doing a scratch start, um, yep. I, I, you know, I don't, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be hours and you're not going to, you know, you're going to spend all your money on marketing for a while and yeah. uh, uh, things like that. So um, <clears throat> we are, we are in network with some PPO, so that helps. We're not in network with all of them, but, okay. but some, um, you know, some people I had friends that wanted to start fee for service. I just, I don't know. Um, it's hard. I'm okay it's with, hard. I'm so okay. hard. Yeah, it's hard. I don't know if I'm good looking enough to do that. I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> um, that's, that's kind of always the joke or something. What about like a referral staff. program? You got something where you get a lot of business probably from internal referrals from existing accounts. We get a or, lot of referral. Okay. We, we, we shoot for the metric we shoot for is 60% internal referral. Okay. And we, we usually do that because we're just trying to be, you know, we want to be nice to everybody. We're, we're trying to build long term relationships with our patients. They're all local. You know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody talks as a small town. Yeah. What about, um, you know, digital? You thinking about, I know we talked a little bit about, but you thinking about maybe impression taking, maybe get yourself a little trios over there or something, three shape? Or, we are. What yeah, are you we thinking? are. Are you, are, you, are you talking to my team or something? What's going on here? Like, <laughs> well, there, I'm hoping, man. Sir? We could save a lot of shipping <laughs> if you could I'm, I'm, digitally yeah, send me those digital, impressions. I'm like, this is like, this sounds familiar. <laughs> this sounds like comes up in our meetings, you know? They're like, doc, doc, spend the money. Come on, doc. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't need a vacation. Like, yeah, come on. Yeah, no, nah, you need to work, money, baby. Let's, let's build it. <laughs> Build it, and then at 50, you could be going, hanging out wherever you want now. Just tell me a little bit. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking of I'm looking thinking at? digital. You know, we were thinking, so we were thinking Sarek last year. Mm -hmm. And again, we sat down as a team, and 
the feedback I got from everybody, you know, my consultant and other doctors that I talked to was just, it's, a, it's kind of a steep learning curve yep. and uh, with Sarek and that, you know, if you're going to do it, you really got to, you know, invest in the, the training, the CE, you know, with your team, because what people were, what people were telling me is like, if, if your, if your assistants can't do it, then, you know, you end up doing it as the doc and your, your production goes down. You're, yeah. you're, you're used to just, you know, so that was kind of the, um, we kind of put the brakes on the Sarek, but the digital impression, I, you know, I think my team would, would, they'd love it. They've been oh. kind of bugging me about it. Um, uh, we've been focused on the associate a little bit more because we've, we just started him a couple months ago. So I'm, that's kind of been my excuse lately to them. It's like, let me, let me get him going. And then, yeah, uh, you know, absolutely. I try to push him off a little bit. Um, because I'm, I'm a little old school that way, I guess I'm just so fast with, yeah. uh, oh, with, I know. With the, and but what you the do, the volume, cool. you know, you really do, but I think it's, it's getting easier and easier. It's pretty amazing, and just the yep. accuracy is 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 second to none right now. It's just uh, it's pretty wow. amazing how these impressions. I mean, you're still going to do your temp and everything, but you know what? It's mm -hmm. basically it's instantly getting to us. We can start working on it, get it back to you in like a day or two, and it's just oh, uh, cool. it just and you know and it's saving you know a lot of money, especially the volume that you do of the shipping yeah. one way. How I much mean, am I going to save? You know, you're not, the numbers here. you know, it just depends. I mean, you do almost a hundred grand a year in lab work. I think you're going to drop a 20% almost off of if you're going wow. on my Bruxers or monolithic. I mean, we kind of mm -hmm. drop that price about 20% on that because I'm saving on all, you know, the plaster work I'm saving on the inbound shipping. Oh, wow. I'm saving on quite a bit, but, um, it's not only that, I mean, the savings is important for you there, but for me, it's just what really helps is, you know, we always have that variable, you know, with impression taking, you know, there's stuff that's going to be shrinking and teeth yeah, and moving, yeah. you know, he's going to have that, but the accuracy you're getting with the digital, there's no, there's no lying about it. It is what it is. We can work, worry, worry on, and adjust, you know, cement gaps and everything else. It's just mm. kind of a neat, neat thing. And like you say, you're so fast at what you do now, but I bet you the way they're getting now, like I'm a big trios guy. I'm a, you know, um, 3M's yeah, got okay. a good one. Itero's a good one. They're all good. It's like, hey, is the Lambo better than the Ferrari? Is this better? They all work pretty damn good. Even Sarek. I mean, it's right up there, but. It's something, um, it is getting to be a point and click. I mean, even the trios is color now and everything else. They got oh, wow. it, they got it, you know, wireless. You can go around with that little wand and you can scan a mouth inside there, full arch in under a minute or two. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's instantaneous. And it's just like, you know, we're getting the posing and a lot of this stuff we can do modelless. I mean, I just did a 300 bridge on my lower left that we cut off an old PFM that was cracking yeah. forever. And we went in, popped that thing off in about three minutes and scanned it. It was the lab. And, you know, the next day you put it in and it's just, I know a lot of guys, you know, work with the Sarek and it's same day dentistry. That's why I asked you if you had a Sarek when you said same day dentistry. Well, same day dentistry, you can be doing a lot of directs and everything. So I understand that same day dentistry uh, concept. But yet with this, um, I think the biggest thing is just the lab uh, having the excellent results with um, just the fit, the fit and everything else. Okay. It's just so much more predictable where we're pretty good at what we do analog and, you know, old school with impressions and I'm a big emperor gum guy and on and on. I've been over the years. <laughs> I've talked about it in polyether with polyvinyl, but you know, when you take in that uh, variable out of it with the impression, you know, um, it's just so much more predictable. And especially nowadays with the monolithics that are getting so aesthetic, like our, our Bruxer yeah. aesthetic, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's like you're, you're, you're eliminating breakage that you didn't have five, 10 years ago. Um, you're eliminating, mistakes with impression distortions which you didn't have till you know a few years ago so I mean, you're taking the most majority of the problems that can happen they're kind of being taken away and yeah. sure it's 30 40 grand or whatever system but that's going to pay itself off in time and just even your patients when they're tilting their head over when you're wanding in their mouth and they're seeing these 3d star wars mm -hmm. freaking just technology it's just amazing and they're looking at it and they're flipping your mouth around they're showing you opposing it's like the old days when you got a inner oral scanner where you could show the amalgams all cracked in the TV screen up on the big block yep. TV back in the day. You look at that and the patient goes, oh, okay, I understand. I see that. But it's a whole different realm now when they're seeing their mouth and just virtually reality and just spinning around and boom, you're sending off the lab and it's coming back and it's aesthetic and it's beautiful and it's not going to break. It's, it's kind of a game changer for sure. But 
Ask me how I like it. Hey, I like it a lot. <laughs> it sounds like you like the trios. That's kind of what that was the impression I got, Sean. Yeah, I like the trios. And you know what? When I'm my own guy here, I can say what I like. It just yeah. it's instantaneous yeah. too. It comes right to us where a lot of the other ones they gotta go through their hub, they gotta adjust and and do some things to it where it actually comes straight to me when that scan okay. and it's just freaking it's unbelievable. It's a little bit more than the other ones out there, but yet I just think it's the best one. And uh one of the, the head guys as a CEO I, likes to come to my lab and help us out a little bit here. So I kind of like him. Mean, I don't get anything free. I'm not paid by trios at all, anything. And um, But it's just something we see a lot of dentistry here. And um, it's one of the ones, if I was a dentist, I'd be getting that one. But, um, you at, know, yeah. yeah, it's just something yeah, to think about. But Well, it's something we've been, it's been on the, uh, it's kind of on the agenda, I guess you would say. So um, one of the things about having a bigger team, you know, again, you know, if you're, if as a dentist, you know, at a certain point, you can, you just, you got to become kind of a, a, a team as yes. the office to, to keep growing, you know, um, you know, you know, a 500,000 a year office, you know, you could probably be the doc and do everything and, you know, yep. micromanage and, you know, no problem. Uh, but you get bigger at a certain point, you're like, okay, I can't check everything. I'm going to have to have some people that, that know what they're doing. Exactly. Um, I, and, and I'm a spender as my wife knows. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I've got people at home, my wife, yep. and then I've got people at work, um, Patty, one yep. of them, yep. um, who who are like, keep in check. You don't, <laughs> you don't get to buy anything else until this and this happens, like number wise. Like yeah. you just know. I like, got the same thing, and that's that's the way it's supposed to be. Because I would give away the store. I'd probably give every crown to my doctors for free if I heard uh -huh. a story about a patient. And then I want to buy all the stuff, but man. You got to have people hold you in check, and I do. And, you know, you, your people, you're only as good as your people, whatever you do, and oh, yeah. you surround yourself with them, and you let them do what they do, and, and let the ego mm -hmm. go. Like, I can't do ah, – thankful for my children here with all this digital crap. I, I'm so – crappy on the computer and everything and it's just it's just the way i was brought up i mean i got a guy here looking right at me like sean okay don't push no buttons because i'll screw it up but <laughs> i know how to make teeth and that's what i do but yet now it's just kind of it's going to a whole paradigm shift on the whole digital revolution but you're still going to be having to deal with patients you're still going to have to have your hand skills in the mouth you're going to mm -hmm. just have a couple extra tools in your belt going forward that are going to help your life be a little bit more manageable and a little more predictable and you're going to sleep a little better at night because yeah. the consistency is going to be going up a little bit more. Not that it hasn't been real consistent, but it can even get more consistent. And I just yeah. think the people and the patients, I mean, what you can do with these things too. I mean, we're going to be able to do scan for a partial scan for a denture, send it out and we can still do it old school. And there are always going to be labs out there because there's a lot of labs that don't want to change and they're not. And they're going to have their doctors that, you know, 95% of the doctors out there are working with small, all two three man labs locally and stuff like that and it just um you know you just you got to service the doctor and what he wants and a lot of these guys still don't want to get anything to do with digital so i just know you're kind of a younger gun here and yeah. i just knew you know you're you're crushing it old school but i think as you advance a little bit more into the digital realm you'll be moving uh, even up higher up that mountain, I think. And I just, I really truly cool. think it's that way. But so dude, wrapping this up, what kind of final advice could you share with some of our listeners, some of our young practitioners <laughs> of starting a practice or you kind of went through a lot, but give us a little bit of final advice you could give out to some of the younger people starting off. You know, just, you know, the most valuable thing you're ever going to get from an associate associateship is learning how to be more productive. Um, you know, you sometimes, uh, you know, you're, you're going into an associateship and you're, okay, you're looking at the percentage, um, you know, what are you getting paid? What's your daily guarantee going to be? Um, but the knowledge that you gain from that associateship is by far the most, uh, most uh, prof, you know, uh, I guess wealth or whatever you want to call it, yeah. the most valuable thing you're going to get. Uh, because, you know, it, it, if you can't get to a certain productivity level, you may want to own your own office and you're just never going to be able to do it financially. Yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to buy into an office. You're not going to be able to do a scratch start, anything like that. Um, you know, when, when I, when I first started in my private practice associate, I mean, I was just, uh, you know, d d doing low numbers and I was constantly going to the, you know, Dr. Trio, some of these older dentists that were there working with me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, okay, how do I present this? How do I, what should my treatment plan be? You know, trying to, you know, watching them, listening to them, how they presented to patients, um, you know, and, and just the knowledge, Knowledge for, that was far more valuable than any money that I ever made as an associate. That's what allowed me to go off 
uh, to start my own office. You know, yeah. like with, if I'd never had that, there was no way I could have ever, ever, ever done that. You know, I just financially, you know, I could do it all. I, you know, I could want it. I could, I could work hard, but I just wouldn't have the knowledge part of it. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge thing. And then also just, you know, do tons of CE, learn ortho, learn implants. You know, you may not even do that much of it, but it's going to allow you to see so many more things in the mouth that yes. you just wouldn't see before, you know, until, until I started doing um, ortho, you there's there's stuff I would you know just little things like impacted canines and stuff that I never look for uh, in patients that now I can see so quickly on a panel um, implants. Until I took uh, you know live placement of implant courses, you know I I you know I, I learned so much on you know even if I'm not going to do the implant, if I'm going to send it to my oral surgeon, now I have I can talk to that patient so much better. I can kind of okay this is going to be a case that's going to be tough for the oral surgeon. There's probably going to be some bone grafting and things here. Um, this will be a slam dunk easy case for the patient. You know this might be a place that maybe an implant's not doable. And I can kind of save the patient some time there and stuff. So um, take, you know, learn, um, you know, learn from older dentists, take lots of CE courses. I know it's expensive. Um, trust me, I, I spend a lot on CE. Sometimes yeah. I had to do payment plans and stuff like that, but it, it's an investment. It pays off. Absolutely. No, dude, words of wisdom there. That is so true. And education, education. I mean, it's your to learn everything you can about what you do. So important. And I just, I love this podcast with it because last few, we've had a couple of guys from uh spear education and it's just, mm -hmm. it, the, you know, it's so important that, you know, to, to get a broad spectrum of different services that, Hey, you might not be doing it, but like you said, learn it and you might be able to diagnose certain things better because of it. And, uh, Invest in yourself because that's your biggest asset. And, you know, it's money well spent. Like you said, I even borrowed on it in payment plan. Do that. You know, you mm -hmm. can't, the guys say, oh, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to do it and to yeah. invest yeah. in yourself. I remember, you know, just, and the same thing with me, it's skills and everything else. You just kind of keep, you know, nurturing that brain and exercising it and learning it because this is your field. And it's just something, uh, it's great to have a bright young guy just kind Kind of speaking of, you know, it's continuing education, learn what you can. You hit, you, you went to some heavy hitters. I mean, I think that breakaway practice uh, is huge yeah. for you doing that, along with all your other CE, along with being on Dental Town where you'll never practice again solo. And, you know, and then having a few two, uh, mentors here and there. And look at you, you know, um, it's just huge. It's just huge. It takes some big waivers, too, to start a practice from scratch, man. Especially in, uh, you know, it does, man. It takes balls, dude. It's and that you have to be the kind of person that just you got to have your own practice. I don't know what else to say. Like you, you're yeah. just kind of like, you know, you're looking at practices for sale, and you're like, no, nah, it's not what I want. And yep. I mean, it's just. You know, I don't know if it's the best financially way to go, but it's, you're just that kind of person like, man, I just, it's my dream. I want it. Yep. It's my vision. And I'm just going to, I don't care what it costs. I'm going to make it happen. Exactly. And I did the same thing. I remember when I was signing two SBA loans uh, to build this place and man, I'm just two years into it on my own. And I signed so many papers and it was for like $1.8 million almost, 175 wow. or whatever and two different loans. And it was an eight year payment plan. And dude, that was paid off in 2012 or whatever, man. And that extra, I think it was an extra 20 plus grand a month that went in my pocket. And I'm like, what the heck can I spend that on? <laughs> Hell, let's go buy a yacht. <laughs> no, it's just put your time in and yeah. money will come. And, you know, I just you know, a good 10, 15 years in the, in the trenches and you treat people good. I don't care what business you're in. You're going to flourish. You're going to work yeah. it out and things ah, just glorious. I just love it, man. I get excited. I love dentistry. I love talking to guys like you and dude, I can't thank you, Dr. Collins, man, for all your time. Heck, well, I thought you. this was going to be yeah. short and sweet, man. We were well over an hour here. My guy keeps going, oh, Sean, no. cut it off, cut it off. Okay. My day. You could have asked Patty that. Patty, Patty will tell you. I'll, I'll talk all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, dude, just one of my easiest podcasts. I freaking love it, dude. When the doctor just rolls and gives us words of wisdom and it's real. You know, all my guys on here are real dentists. 
and uh, they're in the trenches each day, and that's why I love it. And so a little uh, pearl here and there, I'm sure some of my guys will get some from you, and uh, I just can't thank you for your time, Dr. Collins. And hey, if there's thank any- you. This was fun. I enjoyed this. Oh, Very dude, fun. I enjoyed it too, man, and I can't thank you enough. And anytime you're in the area, we'd love to have you by. We'll treat you like family here. You know that. Cool. And our technicians would love to see Dr. Nathan Collins and Nathaniel. You know, come on in. And then, hey, and uh, I, I might, I'm trying to get my wife to let me go out again next, uh, in August. Uh, we'll, we're going to have a crew there anyways. But you should look into that okay. Dental Maverick Summit, man. Um, maybe you can get out for a day or two. It's it's just a bunch of guys. We drink a bunch of nice little beer out there. It's it's yeah. fun and uh, big time. But, uh, you know, for all that you do, you just go over there and sign up, and I'll I'll take care of you on that sign up. But it'd be good to say hi to you at least. And, okay. Uh, you yeah, know, we'll have I, to get the uh, – yeah, Can get the, the info right? and just tell Tuana uh, Sean's yeah. taking care of it. He'll he'll hook me up because I'm a sponsor of it, and uh, so just uh, let him know. But yeah, bring your wife too, man. It's good to have the okay. wife. Always bring your wife with you, man. And uh, always, yes, yeah, yes. Always, always keep her with you. Yeah. Yes. Anytime I go to Vegas or anything, it's like, honey, we're going. To, you're you're going. Yeah. Uh, there's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to see you without your wife. Exactly. <laughs> it's important because then you'll be married for like 35 years like me. Because yes, she'll just be happy with you, and you want yep. happy wife happy. Happy life, dude. <laughs> happy wife, happy wife. You're, you're in class and she's by the pool and exactly. she's having fun. Yes, that's, that's yep. the way to go. That's it, Definitely. dude. She'll have that cold beer waiting for you when you come out in your little slinky <laughs> shorts and say, I'm here, honey. Let's go. Let's go for a swim. So that's cool. Well, hey, dude. Um, Thank you so much, Dr. Collins. I appreciate for your, um, the dental up, coming on the Dental Up podcast this week. And uh, again, thanks for all the work that you do with Keating Dental Arts. And God bless you hey, and your family. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, we'll fun talk- time. Like I said, very fun. All right, dude. We'll talk to you real soon. All right, man. All right, Have man. a great day. Take all it right. easy. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up podcast show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.